Good afternoon to all the respected panelists. My name is Tanvir Singh Channa. I'll be presenting on topics that are designed architecture for the disaster affected communities of Assam. My co author is Art Anshuman Dubey. So, starting with my first slide now. So my first slide uh, has the Indian uh, flood hazard map where the area in, uh, on it depicts the area liable to floods. Flood, so what are floods? Floods is an unwanted uh, catastrophe, which is a result of breaches and levees by the rivers, which is the normal life pattern of human beings. In India, floods are the most common for natural disasters, with 60% of landmass prone to floods. They may around 20,000 lives annually. Out of this 60% landmass, 10% is occupied by the northeastern state of Assam. This map depicts the location of Assam in the northeastern region of India. Coming to my next slide, this depicts the flood hazard uh, map of Assam, where is again the area under orange is the area liable to floods, and we have the Brahmaputra River, which flows uh, throughout the state and its tributaries. The Brahmaputra River and Brahmaputra and the Bharat are actually the two other two major river systems in the state, which are fed by more than 50 tributaries. So they have been assisting irrigation and transport in this, uh, transportation in the state since ages. But every year during the monsoon season from June to September, and the precipitation state has an annual precipitation of 2900. So every year during the uh, monsoon season from June to September, the state experiences annual flooding. So 39.58% of uh, Assam area is prone to floods out of the 78 lakh hectares of land. Along with floods come riverbank erosion, which is uh, basically wearing away of the banks for, uh, due because of the rapidly flowing uh, flood water. This happens due to ill maintenance of riparian buffers, which also happens because of like, anthropogenic activities like uh, human encroachments, human settlements along the rivers, and construction of banks, bridges, etc., which disrupts river dynamics. So riverbank erosion is like a temporary, tem like, has temporary effects on the people. So the land, land, so the people lose their land, right? So the, in this image, figure four, the big flood affected areas. So when they lose their land, they, their houses, they get flow away with the river as debris. The livestock is lost. So in search of shelter, people move to higher regions. They lose their identity. They suffer from financial crisis. Sometimes they're also termed as illegal immigrants uh, from Bangladesh. You know, they are not at the state to rebuild their houses again. So these, so these people need to roam around the state without any rule. So it's a lot of social socioeconomic imbalance in the state. Around 7% of Assam's total area has been wiped out by river bank erosion, during more than 4.27 lakh hectares of land. Now to counter this, what are the mitigation activities undertaken by the government? Uh, the various organizations uh, such as the Brahmaputra Board, Ministry of Water Resources and the Water Resources Department of Assam, and various uh, policy initiatives like construction of there, which is mainly restricted to construction of bank revetments, bond banks, clean border reflectors. So it's basically restricted to construction of embankments. They have also an uh, yeah, like eco-friendly measure of geotextile bias, but it also failed. We have uh, the Assam State Disaster Management Authority had uh, created a program called Modern Flat Villages, where they had provided raised hand pumps to uh, different villages of Assam along with uh, fuel efficient stoves and solar lanterns. But these are not efficient to help people fight against floods. The structures need to be improved. Need, the structures need to have flood resilience to help them counter these floods every year. Let's come to vernacular architecture of Assam. So the Assam type architecture is influenced obviously by the humid climate and the topography of the state. The Aung Kingdom which ruled for more than 600 years. They had a very impractical, expensive and difficult to construct kind of architecture. But the common people, they used uh, bamboo, thatch, and mud to construct their houses using the vernacular methods. So these are some of the planning configuration of the houses that are found in the rural areas. Uh, the area in blue is the built-up area, with yellow being the circulation area as veranda. Then we have the kitchen area and the toilets, which are placed away, kitchen being placed away because to avoid fire risks. This is a sketch which depicts the uh, layout of spaces. We have we enter from the road. We have this pasture which is called as body, where you have the vegetables and all. And you have a backyard which is called the sotal. And toilets here. We enter from the veranda, a living space, dining space, and bedrooms. A veranda space at the back as well, and then a kitchen. There are mainly uh, three types of like, predominantly three types of houses that exist uh, under vernacular architecture. Assam. We have the Changa, which is uh, Changa is built by the Upper Assam tribe of Upper Assam Mishing tribe. So uh, they built using bamboo, thatch, and mud, and uh, they built on six to seven steps of plinth. 
Like you have stilt of six to seven cells. Then you have bamboo houses, which are the lambda chin. Then you have uh, a bamboo structural grid with bamboo trusses, which is uh, covered using uh, aluminum sheets or maybe thatch. Then you have the ikora house. Now, what is ikora? Ikora is a reed which was used in uh, houses. Like we, we place these uh, strips of ikora and covered them with mud plaster, and they act as walls. So the British uh, they developed this type of uh, this the ikora with uh, with to convert them into Assam type architecture. So they had this wooden frame. They created a wooden frame with a uh, masonry plinth and used wooden sword joists and a wooden truss. So they the partitions were done using this ikora using ikora ikora reed and it was covered in mud plaster. And then you have roofs of uh, asbestos or aluminum. Like in these two uh, sketches, we see that we have a brick masonry wall. This is the ikora, uh, which is now being replaced with bamboo strips because ikora is no longer available in the state. And then you have doors and windows made of salwood, and you have the mud plaster or lime plaster. Above the beam, you have a matted bamboo, uh, which is termed as torja. The Chang bamboo houses are single story used for residential purposes, but the uh, ikora houses can also be used for institutional commercial purposes. The building plan are usually L or C shaped. Let's come to some com uh, study some community resilience strategies of Majuli. Majuli was formerly the largest river island in the world, but it currently it is the largest river island in India because it has, it has lost uh, its designation as the largest river island in the world because it's been continuously uh, eroding land. Before it had an area of one to five zero square kilometers, but currently it is it has three hundred forty two square meters square kilometers of land. So the people are very vulnerable to floods eh? and they have developed some strategies to counter it. Like the settlements are uh, perpendicular to the river, oriented perpendicular to the river. Then you have the height of stilt, which varies as per the functions. You have a dwelling units and then an, a grain storage unit with uh, area below it, which is used for storing the livestock. We have hand pump, which is placed at a uh, certain height. They have vegetation and slopes to avoid erosion. And reduce velocity of uh, uh, like reduce velocity of um, water and wind. Uh, arrangement of huts. The arrangement of huts uh, are along the main road with the dwelling unit, a food grade storage, uh, a vegetable farming, a hand pump, and these are the summer wind orientation. You have vegetation along the road. The roofs are oriented uh, opposite to the direction of wind. So this is a section which depicts the surrounding landscape. So we have the river, then you have farming fields for protection. Then you have community ponds for fishing, farming fields again, vegetation barriers, a main road, and then comes the settlements. Uh, this is a section, like the talk about the loss of vernacular architecture. Right? Following rapid urbanization of Assam, starting from the capital of Guwahati, state capital of Guwahati, where business complexes started to appear, you know, rapid urbanization led to obviously a rise in the land prices. So people had smaller lands, they want to develop uh, the multi-story structures. You can't do that with uh, like uh, vernacular structures because they're limited to G plus. So they started going with RCC developing multi-story structures, but without uh, understanding that it's causing a negative impact on the environment, they're contributing more and more to uh, the carbon footprint, although vernacular architecture is a very sustainable approach towards uh, development. So like in uh, a village that I studied, we had the magma which has been constructed had the settlement on both the sides and magma acted as a circulation area, but still the village got flooded because the rainwater gets stranded here. It gets uh, because of the rainwater only getting flood flooded. So when the flood, uh, when the water from the river starts uh, entering here, the situation worsens. So the mitigation activities are actually not working. Then you have uh, in the houses, people have started building uh, RCC stilts, and then you have uh, bamboo houses, and many people have started to come uh, with ACC, AAC blocks and concrete houses. So vernacular architecture is getting lost, it needs a revival. Come to, let's come to flood resident architecture. So flood resident architecture is meant to provide resident structure to find the natural disaster. You can do it by dry flood proofing where you have uh, you are not allowing the water to enter. And you have wet flood flood proofing where you are allowing the water to enter by allowing the float uh, structure to float by allowing the buoyant force to act. Buoyant force acts from all the sides from downwards and from the other four sides. Uh, 
in under amphibious construction the structure is allowed to float rather than succumb to inundation when exposed to flood water so we are under this is a resting position and then as the water starts to rise the structure also starts to rise up this is a condition of uh, a case study inference of Casa and Fabian Nicaragua, where they had a, a bamboo structure with uh, encased in with, uh, plastic barrels below, which provided the buoyancy. And uh, they had vertical guidance posts for to allow the structure to move along a certain axis. So uh, this is how uh, the, the fought floods. Then we have another inference from Bliss Pastures, wherein they were retrofitted uh, a house. There is an existing uh, house to be there uh, added vertical guidance post to the existing floor structure. They had added waterproof plywood strapping, and below that they had buoyancy blocks, which could be plastic barrels or uh, expanded polystyrene. Expanded polystyrene being a better option, uh, like in terms of cost effectiveness, than plastic barrels. And the structure used to float when it was succumbed to flood water, and the people and this is how the people used to fight floods. Then this is a, a section of a bamboo resident housing by, uh, by an organization called Seeds in Gola Ghat, Assam, wherein they had built uh, stilt columns which were encased in rubber and uh, the footings were encased in concrete. The rest was a uh, basic bamboo structure using all the vernacular methods, the torja and the bamboo matting, everything. And then they had a bamboo truss with uh, the roof covering and they used a uh, lateral uh, for protection and lateral forces use cross brace and the design was uh, flexible allowed uh, shifting of floors during floods then another inference from uh, the lift house in bangladesh wherein they had this rcc and brick construction made a service spine which had composed toilets and uh, composed toilets and bio sand filtration methods which raised hand pumps and along them they had this uh, sustainable bamboo dwelling units. So the structures, uh, in this I mean the structures under the flood water structure used to rise, but the service pine is uh, stationary, which acts as circulation area. And uh, then you can use the uh, bias and filtration method, which use, uh, which use the uh, you know, water and filtered it in the water pump. And uh, they obtain water filtration methods in the service pine and that compose storage. This had the capacity for to store uh, compose up to 11 years as one 5.5 years each. Uh, coming to landscaping measures, uh, landscaping measures, we can, uh, the courtyard should allow sunlight, then trees for fruit and timber should be uh, used. And you should go for plants which have an affinity for wetness along the slope, catkin grass should be kept. Uh, should be grown and uh, trees which has dense dense roots like coconut or uh, palm tree should be used to like protect from erosion so it holds the soil together um, along with that uh, bamboo plantation should be done because it also helps in because it's locally available and also helps in holding the soil together and that's all thank you